Um, so we're going to talk a little bit um, about rope today. I'm specifying this particularly for uh, the tree industry or arboriculture. Um, and this is kind of a philosophy, not even philosophy, it's just the way I perceive and understand ropes. And certainly, you know, this is something that's, you know, open to discussion and things. But whether we're talking industrial rope access, uh, high angle rope rescue, arboriculture, in, in, in my mind, we have two types of ropes. So we're talking about our our braided lines. I'm not even going to enter into, we're not talking about twisted ropes like three strand, uh, but our braided lines and then our kern metal ropes. We've either got dynamic climbing lines, which we don't use in our industry but for the most part. There may be specialty applications, but those are intended for uh, mountaineering, rock climbing, where you're actually leading a high angle pitch and there's a chance of a fall. You will be falling onto your anchors, very similar to negative blocking, all right? And I'm just gonna leave it at that. That's dynamic rope, all right? The rest of it's static line. All of our arborist climbing lines are static lines, okay? People think um, static line refers to kern metal. Not necessarily so, because as we just talked about a second ago, rock climbing lines are kern metal construction, but they are dynamic climbing lines. They have a lot of energy absorption in them. They stretch a lot, almost rubber band like. Uh, so in my mind, anything when we're talking at 10% of tensile strength, anything that stretches less than, you know, eight to 10% is a static line in my opinion. And those lines should only be used in static rigging applications. When we're utilizing our ropes in arboriculture, we're, e we're either on a moving rope system that we've installed from the ground, and we're, we're utilizing that rope as a, as a mechanical advantage system for the climber, it's a haul and it's got a self belay, but we're moving the rope and moving our load up or down or, you know, three dimensionally in the canopy, or we're on a stationary rope system and we are actually walking up the rope. We're, we're, we're moving up the rope. We always have this overhead anchor. We absolutely do not bad, do not want to take a fall on our arborist climbing lines because on average, with all the ropes that I have, all the uh, climbing lines that are available and utilized for climbing and arboriculture, we're, we're right around an average of about two and a half percent in stretch at 10%. Some of the other manufacturers give a little bit different spec, but just on average, all of our climbing lines are right around that two and a half percent average. Some are three, some are three and a half, some are one, and we'll kind of talk about that. But though that's a very static, okay? And people talk about things like, Oh, you know, well, that's really stretch. The Kern Master, for example, I think it's it's a really good option for a stationary rope system as far as the little bit of give that it has. Right, it runs really well through hardware. Um, there's some of our hybrid devices that'll flatten it out, but it wasn't designed for arboriculture. It was a rescue one. Okay, but really, we, you know, we always having that overhead anchor. We don't. We're not going to fall on our system. Yeah, we might build up some slack. But you know anything from a foot to 18 inch setting in our gear, it, it's it's not a big deal. But if we actually get up above our anchor or get to where we build up a bunch of slack in a rope system and drop into that, it's going to hurt you. All right, these are static lines. Our rigging system is based upon a high directional when we're on our rope. You know we're work positioning or we're moving up and down on a rope system. All right, so let's talk about uh. Well, I want to pick a rope. Well, first, and I get this question all the time. People will say, I want to, I want a static line. Well, you know, can you help me out a little bit, sir or ma'am? Because they're, they're all static lines, okay? Um, are you climbing a moving rope system? Are you climbing a stationary rope system? And say you're climbing a moving rope system. First thing I'm going to ask you is, are you climbing on a, still on a closed traditional system? Or are you on an open system? And that'll kind of get me narrowing down the field for you. So if you tell me, oh, I'm you know, climbing on a moving rope system with a hitch climber pulley and I tie a V key. I'm like, well, do you use a friction saver? Yeah, I use a pulley saver. Well, great. So the first thing in my mind, I'm going to be thinking some kind of 24 strand. Okay. So, you know, for me, it'd be Velocity or uh, Vortex or Voyager. Um, I still use Velocity a lot. It's still one of my favorite ropes. But you're using a friction saving device. So a double braid is going to shine in that application. You're going to get really good performance through your hardware. Uh, depending on the rope you select, something like, you know, Blaze and Blue Moon are really nice, uh, what I consider dual purpose ropes, but we'll stick with moving rope for now. So you're using a friction saver. Well, I, you know, I might just say, hey, you know, 
you, are your hands still strong? Do you, are you know are you, are you good with a small rope? Small rope's going to be lighter. You know, velocity at six thousand pounds might be exactly what you need, right? Our double braids have good hands, which means they knot really easily. They're going to untie easily. They flow through hardware well. They work really good with friction hitches. Uh, great choice if you're using a friction saver for your overhead anchor. Now, if you're natural crotching and you're still on a moving rope system, first thing I'm going to suggest is go with a 16 strand, okay? The 16 strand, the strength member is in the jacket, and we have these big individual strands, so they're going to handle that abrasion a lot better than our th smaller jacket on our double braid, number one, okay? With smaller strands, so they're going to abrade easier, so you're going to get more damage to your strands. But the other thing is your load-bearing component is in the jacket. You can inspect it really easily. So if you're natural crotching, because you are... You're, you're using up your rope quick by doing that. It's, it's easy to inspect, handles the abrasion really well, cleans a pitch really well. 16 strand sign for that. Um, they're all going to be in a half inch diameter from the three reputable rope manufacturers, actually four counting Marlow. Um, so some downsides to these is in your cam devices, these are kind of maxing out some of the cams and some of the foot ascenders and hand ascenders and chest ascenders and things. So wouldn't be my first pick for a stationary rope technique. But so going back to our double braid, you know, really good hand. And when we refer to hand, we're talking about just the easily, you know, how you can manipulate the rope. You know, you can tie knots really easy, things of that nature. Where we go to something like this prototype rope, right? It really has a stiff hand. You know, it doesn't knot well. It's actually difficult to bag up because it just kind of lays there like wire, right? If we are not using, not saying you can't natural crotch with these, but the downsides of natural crotching with a double braid is both the cover and the core share the load. They both they both are load bearing members. And you're gonna get independent movement between the cover and core, no matter whose double braid it is. Some more than others, but you're gonna get that. So if you're going up over a branch around, you know, a 10, 12 inch stem, you got a lot of friction in place, so we're braiding those smaller strands, and we're going to get you know independent movement between the cover and core. So, not my first pick for natural crotching, but they totally work. You're just going to not get the life out of the rope or the performance as if you're using a even a set of rings or a pulley saver, um, you know, rope guide things of that nature. So, going you know finishing up on double braids. Another thing. A lot of guys do, um, myself included. I don't do a lot of actual movement in the canopy with stationary rope systems, mostly because um, A, I'm stubborn, don't do production work anymore, so I don't get a lot of opportunities for those type of trees where the benefits of you know not having to worry about redirects and things of that nature. We're central leader trees out here right there. So, you know, canopy access, stationary rope has always been king for decades but i always switch over to a moving rope system that being said your 24 strands and a couple of the current metal constructions will lend themselves to both stationary rope systems and moving rope systems if you're gonna use one rope for both i prefer a double braid for that and then that's where you're going to get into where we talk about stretch so on these three samson lines that i have here i've got my predator Actually, that's a special Predator, but Predator here, Voyager, and Velocity, it's 3% stretch at 10% of tensile strength. So that being said, well, Velocity is 6,000 pounds. So 600, you know, 600 pounds is 10%. So on paper, we could expect 3% of stretch. Now, in a moving rope system, not going to be as big a deal because we've got two legs of rope sharing the load, but we get to... A stationary rope system we're actually walking up that rope you're, you're gonna perceive some stretch in the velocity not as much so in the Voyager because it's 8,000 pounds you know for 150 to 170 pound climber they're, they're not gonna be spiking into that 800 pound zone so this isn't gonna feel stretchy something like this um, excellent choice for dual purpose blue moon excellent choice for dual purpose all right think about your 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 double braids for those applications. 
I still prefer a dedicated canopy access line and then I'll, I'll use a separate rope for moving rope technique, particularly out here where we have to advance from our initial tie-in point and get, you know, another 80, 100 feet in the canopy. So kind of hope that answers some questions there on double braids a little bit. And keep in mind, you know, tacky on the, the V series from Samson, you know, uh, Blaze, Blue Moon, uh, the other color permutations of those ropes. The nylon core ones just expect around 3% stretch at 10% of the tensile strength. Your polyester core ones, such as Blue Moon and Blaze in that family, th those are polyester core and polyester cover, and they don't stretch as much. So, you know, a lot of guys might like that better for canopy access. And it, and it is, and we're going to talk about that next. So remember, again, they're all static lights, okay? But now, now we're going to talk about our Kern methods. And um, there's a couple different... Uh, couple different things I want to talk about on this. So Teufelberger is coming out with a rope that they've developed specifically for access and work positioning for arbor culture. I don't know the name of it yet, but it should be released soon. Uh, and also Yale has designed a rope specifically, and we're talking current metals here, specifically for arbor culture. Uh, other manufacturers are, are working on some. So all of the other Kern mantles that we've been using in tree work weren't designed for tree work. So you're gonna have a lot of different characteristics. Um, KM3 Max, HTP, uh, Samson's uh, you know, static line, uh, Sterling makes a lot of other great products. These ropes were made for things like caving, uh, you know, rope re high angle rope rescue, indus industrial rope access applications. And there's a lot of different considerations. And one thing that all Kern mantles share with a couple of exceptions, one's from Yale, this is the best of my knowledge, and then one's from uh, Teufelberger. They're all gonna be parallel strand cores to one degree or another of either polyester or nylon, and they have a tightly woven, uh, this could be you know, 16 strand carriers, could be 24, 32, 48, a tightly woven jacket, all right? The job of that jacket is to protect the load bearing core, right? So HTP, is an all polyester kern mantle, but it has pretty good hand. It gets some temporary elongation when you ascend on it, but it relaxes in just a few minutes, easy to bag. All polyester, um, and talking about this, the two sizes that we offer at Westport Tree Equipment is the 10 millimeter and the 11 millimeter. The 11 millimeter has on paper, it uh, stretches um, about two, I want to say it's two and a half percent. Um, don't quote me on that, but it's right in there. And I believe Sterling goes at 300 pounds. Okay. You're getting two and a half percent on the 11 millimeter. On the three eighths, we're at like 1% at 300 pounds. So your smaller diameter HTP has a lot less give in it. And uh, without going into industrial rope access stuff, that wouldn't be acceptable for a fall protection line, I don't believe. Uh, and then we go to KM3 Max. This is a super durable jacket on it. It's actually a great choice for an access line, in my opinion. It doesn't flatten out. That's something you look for with some of our hybrid devices. Uh, you know, the, even the hitchhiker could be a rope smasher. Uh, the rope runner could be kind of a rope flattener. So you want a good round bodied rope that doesn't flatten out, doesn't ovalize. Uh, particularly if you're using devices like the D4, the ID, the spider, you want a rope that stays round. And those, all those devices were uh, designed around you know, a, a specific characteristics in a current metal line. So, you know, going back to the, the low stretch, the access portion. So yeah, KM3 Max, you know, HTP, this rope, Sevian, another one, you know, one and a half percent rope. This is a rope that I use uh, for my rescue training and rescue classes. That's great for going up because you, you you don't have any give in the rope, so you do get really efficient. And you know, for the guys that are super fast, they appreciate that type of rope. In, in my opinion, and I'm open to discussion on this, like I see two things that are wrong with that. I want give in the rope, and here's why: the one I'm looking at the cu cumulative, the over time. Okay, we have these really great systems for uh, access in a tree now that we didn't have 30 years ago. But when we utilize these very low stretch static lines, 
for access. One, I think over time, there's no give in that line, particularly. So the give is going to be in our knees, our hips, our lumbar, right? And I think over time that that could be an issue where if you compared that to using something that's in that 3% give range, I think that extra little bit of give is going to matter. The other thing where I think it's going to matter to a degree is, and it happens a lot out here in the West. We shot that lineup. I try to avoid doing this anymore. You're, you're certain you're up over that that good big you know four inch Doug fir branch you know just a couple inches from the trunk almost textbook, but what you can't see in reality is you know 16 inches above that what you're actually over before that big Doug fir branch is is a, a little you know inch diameter dead limb, and that's you know up over a a little uh, you know stob on the branch so you're actually out on the trunk on that you know you you load test you think oh I'm just going to give this a Oh yeah, that's good. You know, not a good way to test your rope. That's something we'll talk about later. Sorry, test your canopy anchor. You start ascending up, you make it up, you know, 60, 80 feet. And then that branch gives and you drop that, you know, just a little over a foot down on that next branch. On this rope, that's going to cause you discomfort. Uh, if we talk, you know, a couple feet, three feet, that's gonna hurt you, okay? Especially as you get higher in the canopy and closer to that overhead anchor, now you've got less rope in the system, okay? That's where I'll argue that having that 3% stretch line is gonna be a lot better for that application. Even and when we're talking about the, the anchor failure and dropping down and getting that shock loading, okay? Now we've actually taken, you know, starting to creep into a fall factor, something like a screamer somewhere in the system might, might be beneficial. But anyway, not digress there. Okay, so that, those are things to consider when I'm selecting a rope. So when I, you know, KM3 Max is great for a pure access line, but what I wind up using is something that has a little bit more give. I don't, even at my weight, I don't care about, you know, I can utilize and get in a little bit of a rhythm with that give and I can deal with that. And I really feel it for day-to-day -day use, that's a better way to go. But if your goal is, particularly if you're you know, competing, um, you know, what a great workout is just walking up a rope do you know 10 75 foot laps you got a workout in that's that's good enough uh, to me anyway uh, and you know so maybe you know racing up there on your one percent line is gonna gonna be good but keep in mind that that long-term thing but so to kind of wrap it up all of our arbors climbing lines are static lines and it's because of the amount of stretch that's in them okay and our rigging, our, our operational system is a you know a high, has a high directional in it. You know we're we're not falling onto our anchors per se. So you know when I'm going to consider and select a rope, I'm going to consider stretch. I'm going to consider you know how does it run in the hardware I'm going to be using. How does it work well with a friction hitch or does it not? Okay, is it you know going to be a good choice for moving rope system and stationary rope system? You know or if I am going to select something for just access line, you know, things you might consider now, we'll go into weight. Uh, we'll go into, we're not worried about so much about hand, but not ability is a big factor. You know, going back to this line, it, the not ability in it's horrible. There's a couple other out there that aren't really good. You know, KM3 Max, you can, you can get a knot set in it. The hand on this is pretty good, but that's the other factors. You know, you want to look at the hand and the not ability. Uh, consider well I want all polyester for this reason because I'm working in an environment that is alkali or whatever um, I don't want nylon core I want an all nylon rope so consider rope construction uh, what the ropes made out of whether it's nylon or uh, polyester or you know for the folks that want to use some of the aramid and you know Dyneema fight you know cord ropes for access if, if that's your cup of tea and then you know Look at that. Don't don't get hung up on tensile strengths. We ANSI requires minimum fifty four hundred pounds. All the ropes are that or more. For the for the just you climbing on your line, you're good to go. Okay. Uh, if you actually you're considering seriously considering your rescue systems, well maybe that's where you'll start to get to those higher strength ropes because the lines now we may maybe seeing two person loads, and if you know you want to maintain a good system safety factor, that's something you'll have to implement. But again, all our ropes are static lines. Uh, when you're selecting a rope, just consider moving rope system, stationary rope system, how you're using them, the hardware, and the interfaces that you're incorporating into the rope system. 
And that's that. Thank you.